as you well know, both pension systems have no problem with whatever the legislature wants to do. There's just some administrative problems that I'd like to point out to see exactly what the intent of the legislator, uh, what, it, what intent of the legislature has with this. One of them has to do with, uh, as you well know, we talked about, which would be on what I have, or page 39. Uh, Leader Cross mentioned that at one time the phrase was, that if someone were to go on a leave of absence, go to work for the labor union, they would have to make a decision. And the only decision they had at that point, the phrase was you cannot get service credit with the city of Chicago while you're on leave working for a labor union if you were also part of a local labor organization pension system. So what this, the, the position that the lawyers at that time for both city funds took was that if they asked, filled out paperwork, they were not part of any local labor pension organization. However, we found out later that there were some people who may have been part of an international health and welfare benefit plan. There are some, uh, some international plans that were much smaller, but they were part of their plan. So it looks as though the language added from the Senate says that the phrase any plan established by the local labor organization means any local labor organization, including but not limited to labor organization itself, affiliates of the local, interstate, state, multi-state, national, or national. Now that's fine. The only problem says the definition of this phrase is a declaration of existing law and shall not be construed as new enactment. Okay. So that seems to make perfect sense, especially with the, the part that says if you're not on leave of absence currently, you cannot take a leave. That makes sense. So the only thing we're talking about here seems to be seven or eight individual the pension fund tells me that are on leave for the city now and working for a local labor organization. Now, if they're a part of any other union uh, or, or any other pension plan whatsoever to stop double dipping, when they came and they wanted to retire from the city, they would have to say very clearly they're not part of any other pension plan. You're not getting credits for the city and get credits there. That seems to make sense. But here's the problem. If we go along with that last sentence that says the definition of this phrase is a declaration of existing law, then here's the question. There might be 20 or 30 people who are already retired and may have been part of an international plan when they retired or when they worked for the city. But since they weren't part of a local plan, they retired and they were given service credit with the city because they gave a letter saying they weren't part of a local plan. But now, if it turns out that they were part of an international plan during those 10 years of service with the union, which if this is existing law, right, then they did not have the authority to get service credits with the city of Chicago because they were with an international plan. So the question I guess I have to ask is, is the city, are you looking for either one of these plans to go after people who have already pensioned out, who are already retired? Let me, I'm just curious. So they've got, they have two pensions? They're oh, retired? We assume that some might. Yeah. They, would have, they would have a small one, say like three, $400 with the international, and then they'd have the city pension fund, whatever that would be. So they got two pensions for one job. But the answer, I, I, I the answer Bob, is no, we're not going to do that. And we're going to attempt to cover that on the floor tomorrow. Okay. And the second, like, well, thank you. And, and the second part was uh, when it comes to, which would be on page 42 of the bill. But and I want to make sure you're talking about a number of people that have since retired subsequent, prior to this, that have collected two pensions under their interpretation of the, the law. They may have. We don't know. It's just a question of do we have to go back and do an investigation to find out. There's nobody that we're aware of. It's just that the question becomes is the pension fund under a duty now to go back and pull everybody who retired under this to see if they did or not. We wouldn't even know how to administer that, but we, we just want to see what the intention of the I don't think the intent, not I think, I think, I know the intent is not to, but if there's an issue of fraud, then there may be some responsibility under this bill. Well, I don't. There's no allegation of fraud. I'm not al alleging any. I'm just. The, the second part, if I may, Mr. Chairman, it has to do with uh, used to calculate the highest average salary. So it seems clear now that there would be the same 12 or 13 people that are on leave from the pension system, or, uh, leave from the city. They're working for the union. And 
under the old law, it was considered or it was interpreted that they could use their union salary for their highest average salary. This makes it clear. Once again, it uses the phrase, uh, this subject is a declaration of existing law. So that's simple because people are already retired. It doesn't affect them. But these 12 or 13 people who are now working for the union, it seems very, very clear that all they could use is their city salary. And that's terrific. Nobody has a problem with that. The only question is for the, if they've been out eight years and their salary with the union was 110,000, let's say, their city salary was 70, they were paying 8.5% on the 110,000 for the past five years. There's no mechanism anywhere that would allow the pension fund to refund any of that money if their salary was only 70,000 or that's the highest it could be they would have taken out 8.5% of their 70,000, but they were taking 8.5% uh, of their 110. Is it the intention of the legislature that they would not be able to get that refund that I think one of the, uh, the lawyer for the Senate basically said it's just the price they have to pay for getting service credits publicly in a private fund. The only reason I'm asking is because Naturally, these people are calling up, and the lawyer for the fund says this language is ambiguous. So I was just wondering if that could be cleared up on the floor also. We'll certainly try. Thank you. Thank you. We wouldn't want any of these retired people to not get their two cents. 